And there's no place in this country to demonize, divide, marginalize, and uh, treat with contempt the other, the immigrant, the minority. Why am I not doing well? The other. That's the reason why we're not doing well. Folks, look, um, to put it in simple, starkest terms, the president is looking out for himself only, and the Republican Party seems to be only looking out for the president. And so it's our job to remind the American people that we're looking out for them. And that requires us — and I know you all know this, but that requires us, in my view, to uh, — to remain united as a party and not be divided. I think we're making — we're having a debate about a false choice between our progressive values and the concerns of high school-educated white and black working people. I don't think that's a choice. I will challenge any of you to put my progressive credentials of 36 years in the Senate up against any of you — any of you. I will also suggest that my commitment to the growth of the middle class is as strong as any of you. I've never found a single solitary conflict between the two. I've never figured we had to choose between our heart and our soul. It's a false debate we're having among ourselves, in my humble opinion. And look, here's, here, 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 here's the deal. I think, and I think most of you know, the House knows better than any other institution, that what the American people want to know and what these — by the way, you know all these so-called racists who voted against us last time out? Remember, a black man and an Irish Catholic kid won those, all those places before. And but for 72,000 votes, we wouldn't be having this discussion. 72,000 votes. And so, folks, let's not — Let's not rip ourselves apart in a debate that is irrelevant. Because, again, I've never found anything inconsistent with standing before a labor audience — and I've been in many of your districts — whether I'm standing before a labor audience arguing about equal pay for women.